Welcome back to Garage Science. This time, I'll be going over how to recoat your vat with polydimethylsiloxane, or PDMS. This coating is necessary when your vat light window becomes clouded and unusable, or if the PDMS surface is heavily damaged. PDMS is widely used among nearly all resin-based 3D printers that use a bottom-up design. This is because these designs require an optically clear light window on the bottom of the resin tank that also functions as a non-stick surface. The PDMS I'll be using today is made by Dow Corning and sold by ML Solar. It is called Silgard 184. Don't attempt to use Silgard 182 as a substitute because this PDMS requires the material to be heated in order to cure, which can significantly overcomplicate the whole process. I purchased this Silgard from Amazon where I was able to get it for about $88, and there's enough material here to do several vat coatings. Prior to recoating, the old PDMS must be removed. You can use a hobby knife or some other sharp object to get under the edges of the PDMS, after which it should basically all peel off at the same time as a single sheet. Now for this vat, I will be modifying it somewhat before recoating it with PDMS. This is because at some point early in this vat's lifetime, I accidentally touched the acrylic window on the bottom with a little bit of fun to do deep black resin. This resin had a pretty negative reaction to the acrylic and caused crazing that started in the corner where it was touched and eventually spread across the whole window. I will be replacing the acrylic with glass to prevent this crazing from occurring in the future. To remove the acrylic, I used a grinding wheel and a dremel to cut it from the bottom of the vat. I then cut a piece of 3 32nds inch thick glass to fit the bottom of the vat and glued and sealed it in place using silicone. Unfortunately, I discovered after the PDMS was cured that it has a very negative reaction to silicone. Therefore, I do not recommend that you use silicone at any point on the inside of your vat if you are intending to recoat it with PDMS. Basically, the cross-linking reaction was inhibited in the PDMS around the wall of my vat where the silicone was located. After some research, I found that this type of PDMS is cured with a platinum catalyst, and it is this catalyst that allows it to cure within a reasonable amount of time, i.e. 48 hours. Without this catalyst, it takes a much, much longer time to cure the PDMS. The reason my PDMS failed to cure is because some chemicals like nitrogen, sulfur, phosphorus, sulfur vulcanized rubber, and condensation cure silicone rubbers inhibit the effect of the platinum catalyst. And as you can see, the PDMS cured in the center of the vat, but not around the edges where the silicone was located. I attempted to recoat the edges with additional amounts of curing agent, but this did not cause them to cure, which sadly meant trying again. It's pretty aggravating when you wait several days on a project only to find out that something went wrong and you have to start over. So avoid being like me and don't use silicone on the inside of your vat. Because the glass was put in place with silicone and I wasn't able to pop the glass back out without breaking it, I decided to clean up the excess silicone around the edges and use an epoxy in the corners and around the edges where the silicone was to provide a barrier. An additional thing I discovered was that the 11 tablespoons of PDMS and curing agent I initially used created a significantly thicker coating than I was imagining it would, and it ended up being about twice as thick as the original coating of PDMS. So for the next attempt, I'll only be using 5 tablespoons of PDMS and about half a tablespoon of curing agent to get the required 10 to 1 ratio. The 10 to 1 ratio is the required ratio by Dow Corning and is provided in the PDMS datasheet. I've linked to this datasheet in the video description. Plan to wear rubber gloves while mixing PDMS as it tends to get a little messy. You will likely have to run your finger around the outside of the measuring spoon you use to ensure only the measured amount is added. Once all the uncured PDMS and the curing agent have been added, you will need to thoroughly mix the two. The PDMS is a 2 hour working time and takes 48 hours to fully cure. It's good practice to avoid stirring in ways that introduce air bubbles, however there is more than enough time for these bubbles to rise to the surface and pop. If you have a vacuum pump and vacuum chamber available, that is an excellent way to remove these bubbles quickly. In my experience, this was not necessary and I did not use one. Once the PDMS is well mixed, pour it into your vat at the center and allow the PDMS to move out to the edges as you pour. Then you may tilt the vat slightly to ensure good contact to the vat wall has been made on all four sides by the PDMS.
Now you just have to wait 48 hours for the cross-linking reaction in the PDMS to take place. It is a good idea to place your vat in a safe space that is flat and level where it will be free from interference for those 48 hours. I also suggest that you cover it with some sort of lint-free material. I use wax paper. This will keep dust and lint from settling on your vat surfaces as it cures. In addition to recoating this vat with PDMS, I will also be adding a layer of FEP film also made by DuPont. Do not try and adhere FEP film to the PDMS before the PDMS cures completely. The PDMS curing reaction generates gases that will collect under the FEP film and produce air bubbles under the film. I tried to do this on a previous vat and ended up with a substantial number of bubbles which eventually allowed resin under the film, thus ruining the vat window and requiring a replacement layer of film. The bubbles also destroyed the clarity of the vat that affected several of the prints I attempted. The FEP film I purchased was from FlexVat.com who sells the DuPont FEP film in smaller and more reasonable quantities at a good price. I provided the link in the video description. FEP naturally sticks to PDMS and so adhesive backed FEP is not necessary. You will want to thoroughly clean the PDMS surface before installing the FEP film to ensure no debris creates bubbles under the film. A lint-free cloth is a good thing to use for this as well as some scotch tape to help remove any leftover debris. To install the film, place it as centered as possible in the vat, starting at one corner and slowly laying the film down until the opposite corner is reached. You will most likely have bubbles under the film, but a rubber spatula can be used to quickly remove the bubbles by pushing them to the edges of the film. And that's it. Fill with resin and print. Remember, the FEP film should be slightly bigger than your build platform to ensure the suction forces that help keep the FEP adhered to the PDMS are always greater than the suction forces created by the build platform or objects being printed. Also make sure the resolution is set up properly in Creation Workshop so your 10mm calibration cube doesn't look like mine. I hope you learned a lot from this video. I certainly learned a lot from making it. If you have questions or if there is something you didn't like about this video, please let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and also remember to subscribe if you haven't done so already. And as always, thanks for watching.